Ruth chapter 1, and commencing to read from verse 1. Ruth 1 and verse 1, please. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon uh, and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left on her two sons. And they took them wives on the women of Moab, of the woman of Moab, the name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And, Mahal, and Mahalon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. You know that little text there? And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband brings me back to the day when my good friend Bertie Johnson, some of you know Pastor Bertie Johnson, was asked to preach at the graveside of the Spence family at the funeral. He prayed much and he prayed hard for the Lord to give him a verse or a text that he could bring to bring comfort. And as he was driving down the road towards the funeral, the Lord brought him to that text where it says, The woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Trying times, isn't it? Verse 6 says, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited His people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. For the sake of time, let's now go down to verse 19. You remember Orpah has turned back, and she's went back to her own home, but Ruth has came with Naomi. Verse 19, So they went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, and which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth this morning. The danger, child of God, the danger Of, circum, of certain circumstances that can come crashing into our lives. The danger of certain circumstances that crash into our lives unexpectedly is that so often those circumstances can change our character. Sometimes, child of God, when certain circumstances come crashing into our lives, the problem sometimes is that those circumstances can change our characters completely. They change us from being the person that we really are into something that God never intended us to be. But the great danger is 
the great danger is, child of God, when we allow these crippling circumstances that comes to us in life, when we allow them to change our characters, the danger then is that they lead us down a very dark and a dangerous path whereby then the circumstances not only change our character, but they begin to control our character. They begin to control our character. And by controlling our character, those circumstances that oftentimes can come crashing into our lives suddenly prevents us from being the people who we really are and from being the person that God wants us to be. Now, child of God, listen to me. Crippling circumstances can come suddenly and can come unexpectedly within our lives. And the lesson is, child of God, we must never allow those circumstances that comes into our lives to get a hold of us and to take control of the character that we have. When we allow circumstances, child of God, to control the people who we are, to control our character, then they begin to dig a very dark and a very de deep grave. I'll repeat that. When we allow crippling circumstances to control our character, then they begin to dig a very deep and a very dark grave. Once that happens, child of God, it brings to death the person who we really are, and it kills the personality out of the person. Circumstances, child of God, can come into our lives totally out of, out of our control. You and I, child of God, this morning have no control at times as to the circumstances that may come in. Many times, child of God, we cannot prevent these crippling circumstances coming into our lives, but we must never we must never allow those circumstances to control us and to have a hold over us as to who we really are. So many of God's people have had their lives destroyed because they built their own character around the circumstances and the surroundings where they found themselves in. In fact, our Scripture reading this morning proves to us and shows us one that really done that. We come this morning to Naomi, and God wants us to see something in the events of Naomi's life in Ruth chapter 1. And child of God, as a lesson, God wants us to see something that we should never do. We should never allow circumstances to control the person who we really are. My text this morning is taken from Ruth chapter 1, and it's verse 20. And this is, what, this is what Naomi declared. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara. Call me not Naomi, call me Mara. You see, child of God, the word Naomi this morning means pleasant. The word Mara means bitter. And because of the bitter experiences of life that Naomi experienced in Moab, those bitter experiences became 
control of Naomi's character. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. I'm no longer pleasant. I'm filled with bitterness. And you know, child of God, when we come to the book of Ruth this morning, we all think this morning that the book of Ruth is all about Ruth. But if you read the book of Ruth this morning, the beginning of the Ruth, the book of Ruth, and the ending of the book of Ruth, it all begins and ends with Naomi. The story of Ruth this morning is bracketed at the beginning and at the ending with Naomi. In fact, did you know this morning in the book of Ruth, Ruth is only mentioned 12 times. But Naomi is mentioned 21 times. And I always believe in my own idea of the book of Ruth, Naomi is always seems to be the unsung hero of the book, but she's a, a great character. But that's the soundtrack this morning from, from Naomi's experience. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Her character has been shaped and molded by her experience. First of all, I want you to notice in verse 1 there was a problem in the making. You know, child of God, the famine came to Bethlehem, Judah. And we see in verse 2 there, in the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of her two sons, and they, and they all head down to Moab. What happened in verse, what happened here was faith was conquered by fear. Rather than fear being conquered by faith, faith has overcome by fear. And what we have here this morning, child of God, is a tragic mistake. We all have made this tragic mistake, child of God. But let's learn from Naomi this morning the awful mistake that we all can make. One of the greatest mistakes the child of God makes is not trusting God. The famine has hit Bethlehem, Judah, but Elimelech makes a tragic choice. He fails to trust God. No child of God this morning, listen. That's the greatest mistake you can ever make. And that is not to trust God no matter how tough your trials are. The psalmist had a lovely, a lovely, lovely thing to say. Psalm 56 and verse 3, At what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And you know, child of God, listen to me. You can trust the Lord this morning, whatever your trials are. There's no problem this morning. There's no trial this morning that can come into our lives that we cannot trust the Lord with. Whatever that trial is, child of God, whatever that problem you may be facing, listen, you can trust God with it. At what times I am afraid, when your wee world, dear, seems to be crumbling around you, and when everything seems to be giving way, and everything seems to be hopeless and out of the control, you can trust God. Do you believe that? You can trust God. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. But you know, child of God, unfortunately here in the first chapter of the book of Ruth, we see a tragic mistake being made. Elimelech, whose name means my God is king, certainly doesn't live up to his name. Instead, this morning of, of, of Elimelech, allowing the king 
of heaven to rule in this desperate situation. He runs to Moab, the godless country. You know, child of God, Elimelech makes a tragic mistake. He tries to run from his problems. When one runs from their problems, nine times out of ten they run into greater problems. Elimelech this morning, child of God, takes the situation, he takes the matters into his own hands, and he makes a run for it, but it leads to tragedy. tragedy. Listen, child of God, take your problems, take your trials, take your tears, but run to God. Don't run away from God. Run to God. My child of God this morning, listen to me. There's no circumstance, there's no situation this morning that God cannot handle. Oh, if Elimelech only knew the, the, the important lesson on waiting on God. Child of God, listen to me. Whatever comes into your life, dear, Whatever trying circumstance comes, listen, the first thing you do is learn to wait on God. Don't you rush. Learn to wait on God. Learning to wait on God is the golden rule for every child of God. Wrong choices are often made. And God's people fail to trust in God and wait on God. And the best of people, listen to me, the best of people can make wrong choices because they fail to wait on God. That's the problem that was in the making. When the famine came, they failed to wait on God, and they failed to trust God. Listen, child of God, no matter how much things may seem to threaten us, learn you to wait on God. God knows where you are. the problem that was in the making. But then there's the, problem, the pattern that was molding because in verse 3 to verse 5, a triple tragedy strikes the home. Naomi loses the husband, and she loses the boys. And her world comes crashing round her. And when Naomi goes through this bitter experiences, suddenly she allows even the bitter experiences of sorrow and loss to control her character. And the first thing she does, child of God, she begins to blame God in her bitterness. The Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. And child of God, how true it is. When we allow bitter circumstances in life to change us and worse to control us, then we start to blame God for it all. Oftentimes, child of God, oftentimes when bitter experiences come and situations come into our lives, listen to me, it's easier to cave into them. I know it is. But child of God, listen to me. 
Instead of caving into these crippling, bitter circumstances that comes and controls us at times, listen, what we need to do is trust God through it all. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Lord hath dealt bitterly with me. And Naomi, the pleasant one, became the bitter one because she allowed the bitter experiences and the bitter circumstance to control the person who she really was. And I ask you a wee question, child of God, this morning. Are you the person that you once were? Who's in or what this morning really controls the person who you are? The danger is this morning, child of God, the danger is it's easy to develop a moral mentality. Many of God's people are bitter today because they allowed themselves to be bitter. And instead of taking control over this over their own characters and in trying times, the circumstances have begun to control their character. Mara, Mara, Mara was the woman that Naomi became because of it. Naomi was no longer the pleasant one. She became the bitter one because she allowed those circumstances to control her. Can I take a wee moment to speak to you young people? Especially you young people who are going to university. You don't need me to tell you this morning it's a big bad world out there. It's evil, it's dark, and it's trying. When you move away on a Sunday evening or Lord's Day evening or a Monday morning to go to university, listen to me. There's so much out there today that would seek, that would seek this morning to mold you into its way. And be careful, young people. When you leave home and you move away to the, sp to the city and you be start and you continue on in your university life, listen, make sure it's you and make sure it's God that has control of your character. I'll tell you something that's so easy. It's so easy, child of God, and listen, I'm not perfect up here. I know all about it because I was once a young teenager myself, and listen to me, it's just, it's so easy to get sucked into the world and its ways. And never you let the circumstances or the surroundings of university life ever start to mold you into its way. Learn to control your own character rather than allow your circumstances and surroundings to do it. Because I'll tell you this, child of God, you're like myself, you're only human. And I'm not going to just talk to the young people here this morning. Us older folk need to hear that too because we working in godly environments as far as the factory floor is concerned and maybe the building site's concerned and all the rest of it. And child of God, make sure that where we are doesn't start controlling the way, the person who we are because so many have done it.
the world. The world has a powerful sway. And make sure the circumstances, child of God, around you does not begin to control the person who you are. Poor Naomi fell foul to it. I often think of Daniel, oh, he was different. There he was, surrounded by nothing, only paganism. But Daniel took the stand, and Daniel says, No. Even in pagan Babylon and all the surroundings there, Daniel was determined to be bold for God. Do you remember Joseph? If there was ever one man in the Old Testament that could be deserved to be bitter, it had to be Joseph, delivered and sold by his own brethren. But you know something? Joseph made a wise decision. He wasn't going to allow the bitter experience to begin to control his character. No, 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 no. Joseph this morning, even through that bitter experience, failed to allow that circumstance to control who he really was. Ask me this child of God, who really controls your character this morning? Tell me something. Is it God? Is God's Word controlling the person who you are? Is God's Spirit this morning in control of your life? Or the circumstances or the situations, child of God, wherein you find yourselves? When God's people or any people cave into their circumstances and they surrender to the situations, what a change of character comes. You know, we often quote that wee verse, Romans 8, 20, don't we? For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to His purpose. But when the bitter experience comes and we can't understand what the Lord has had, friend, then we can fall foul this morning to the bitter experiences and allow those circumstances to control the person who we really are. Don't call me this morning, Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Oh, no, Naomi, no, Naomi. No, Naomi, the Lord hasn't dealt bitterly with you. You still have got your life. No, Naomi. The Lord hasn't dealt bitterly with you at all. Your husband's dead, yes. Your children's dead. You're still alive, and you've still the opportunity of coming back to Bethlehem, Judah. No, Naomi, the Lord hasn't dealt bitterly with you at all. The Lord hath dealt graciously with you. You know, God doesn't end Naomi's story in verse chapter 1. No, no, no. Because I'm going to come now to chapter 4. Because there was the plan that was made. You know, here, listen, child of God, listen to me. Here, is it a good job God doesn't wipe us out when we make mistakes? When we fall foul, God doesn't wipe us out when we make mistakes. You know, God had something wonderful for Naomi this morning. She had something wonderful for her. Do you know what God was able to do, child of God? God was able to turn her bitterness into blessing. No matter how bitter, no matter how hard it is, God can turn our bitterness into blessing. Be, in be encouraged, child of God. God still overrules. Even when we make the mistakes of life, God, oh, still overrules. And God is still well able to fulfill His plan. You know, there's something that Naomi sees, and I think it's wonderful. I honestly believe Naomi could see the hand of God through Ruth. As she watches Ruth, and the events that occur in Ruth's life, she begins to see the hand 
and the purpose of God. You know, child of God, be careful how we live this morning because for you and I, there are people out there who watch us and I wonder, do they see? Listen, child of God, do the unsaved people in Kilkeel this morning and the surrounding district, do they see or can they see the hand of God in our lives? And I believe through the following chapters from chapter 2, 3, and 4, Naomi begins to see the hand of God in it all. She sees the hand of God through Ruth because Ruth lives in obedience. Child of God, we need to be living in obedience. And as we live in obedience to God's Word, then the outside world can see the hand of God. No matter how bitter Naomi found herself in, yet God wasn't failing to fulfill His promise or to fulfill His will. As Naomi watches Ruth, you know, and she takes in all that she sees, this grip of bitterness begins to loosen, and she begins to see God's plan in it all. If Naomi in chapter 1 could only see what would be happening in chapter 4, it would be a blessing, wouldn't it? 4 and verse 14, And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age for thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee which is better to thee than seven sons hath bore him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom became a nurse unto it. Boys, I can tell you she's not called Mara in chapter 4. She's called Naomi again, isn't she? Because here she, her pleasantness will come. And as she cradles and cuddles this little tiny baby, and as it looks up into her face and she looks down into his face, you know she cuddles and cradles the grandfather of Israel's greatest king. She looks into its face, and as she cuddles and cradles this little baby, she cuddles and cradles the very one through whom the promised Messiah would come. In chapter 1, it's all gloom for Naomi, but in chapter 4, it's all glory. Child of God, listen. Listen, child of God. It is a dangerous thing to allow the circumstances of life to control the people who we really are. Whatever bitter experiences come, whatever trying times comes your way, and listen, none of us knows what this week has for any of us. None of us know. Listen to me. Learn to trust God through it all. Because God will always fulfill His plan in spite of what mistakes we make. Life has all its troubles and trials as Naomi experienced. But you know, someday for us, the children of God, the troubles and the trials and the tears, they're all coming to an end. And when that all comes to an end, 
that will be glory for me. When all our labors and our trials are over, and I am safe on that beautiful shore, then to be with the dear Lord I adore, that will be glory for me. Now listen, child of God, it may be tough now, but glory just lies beyond. And let us trust the Lord. And let the Lord control our character. Don't be letting the world or your circumstances control. Trust the Lord. And let the Lord control us. And when life comes to an end, then it will be glory for me.